This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We turn now to the People's Climate March. Organizers estimate as many as 400,000 people marched in New York Sunday in the largest climate protest in history. The turnout far exceeded expectations. Other marchers and rallies were held in 166 countries. More protests are planned for today. Climate activists are gathering today in downtown Manhattan for a mass sit-in dubbed Flood Wall Street. The actions are timed to coincide with the United Nations Climate Summit taking place place here in New York Tuesday. President Obama and over 100 other world leaders are scheduled to attend. Sunday's events in New York began with an indigenous sunrise ceremony in Central Park. Indigenous activists then led the march. Democracy Now!'s Aaron Maté was in the streets at the People's Climate March. We're near the very front of the People's Climate March, and the sign behind me reads, front lines of crisis, forefront of change. This march has been divided up into different groups, and at the front are indigenous and frontline communities most impacted by climate change. And my name is Clayton Thomas Mueller. I'm an organizer with the Indigenous People's Social Movement, I Don't Know More, and Defenders of the Land. Things today are going really, really well. We've got tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people on the street. We have frontline indigenous communities from communities that are disproportionately affected by President Obama's all of the above energy policy. We've got leaders from communities fighting fracking, fighting tar sands, pipelines, all kinds of pipeline fighters from across the continent who are organizing in solidarity with first First Nations from the belly of the beast in Alberta who are trying to stop tar sands expansion at the source. And we're here to send a very clear message to President Obama, Stephen Harper, and the rest of the world leaders that we need legally binding mechanisms on climate change right now, passed. And if they ain't going to do it, then the people certainly will. Right. 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 Um, we're here to march for the next seven generations and to take a stand against big oil companies that are coming through our territories and trying to take our um, ancestral land and destroy them. Um, we're here because it's going to take all of us, all of us, not just the indigenous people, but everyone, everyone in the whole world to come together to save our water. We are from the Peruvian delegation here on the march, and we are marching because we, we are fighting for climate justice, and we are fighting because uh, it, this December, the next COP is going to be in our, in our country. And we are preparing a people summit and a, the next march is in December 10 in Lima. And we are asking the Peruvian government, Ollantumala, for coherence, because even if they are taking pictures here near Ban Ki-moon, they are not doing that kind of commitments in the country. So we need to fight here, we need to fight in our country. This is a global fight. We have about 300 strong here of our young people. We are a uh, human rights organization located in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Most of our young people are from Puerto Rico, from the from Dominican Republic. And the connection between what's happening in terms of our islands and also what's happening here in our waterfront community that Williamsburg is part of. We need, really, the powers that be to come together with our people uh, and really make decisions that are about preserving our Earth. Uh, my name is Carlos Garcia. I'm the Secretary Treasurer of the New York State Public Employees Federation. We represent 54,000 New York State employees who are professional, scientific, and technical workers. And we're out here to say to the U.S. government, New York State government, let's take care of our climate, let's take care of our environment. My name is Irene Joy. I'm with the domestic, National Domestic Workers Alliance, with the New York Domestic Workers here today. And for us, we're here because as domestic workers, it's time to clean up the climate mess. struggle for a long time. We're just unfortunately impacted by climate change. For those of us who are migrant women workers, um, we often come here because of what extractive resources and climate crisis has done to our home countries. What do we do? We've come upon a huge contingent of young people, many carrying signs reading, Youth Choose Climate Justice. Jonah Feldman. I'm here with the Brandeis Divestment Campaign from Brandeis University. And what does your sign say? It says, divest from climate change. 
We believe that our university should sell off all its investments in the fossil fuel industry. That's in coal, oil, natural gas, tar sands, and reinvest into clean, renewable alternatives. Well, my name is Louis Navarro. I'm 16. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. I'm with the Boston Area Youth Organizing Project. Well, as a youth, I feel like every youth should be, should be a part of this because it concerns them and their future, whether or not if they could live by 20 years from now with this climate change. And I feel like it's important for me to be here to show them that the youth is on our side. As we weave through this march that is taking over Midtown Manhattan, tens of thousands out in full force, coming across all different sorts of diverse groups. Number one way to fight climate change, go vegan. I'm Susan DeGeorge, and I'm with both Green Faith and with Hudson River Presbytery. We have everybody from Jains, Sikhs, Buddhists, uh, Hindus, Catholics, Protestants, um, atheists, agnostics, all marching in the group. We want climate justice. When do we want it now? My name is Kaylin Callahan. I'm from Rockaway Beach, and I'm an organizer with Rockaway Wildfire. Superstorm Sandy devastated the Rockaway Peninsula. We know that climate change is being worsened and exacerbated by all of the systemic profiteering that's happening throughout our world. And it's time for that to stop. If you haven't been involved in climate justice activism before, it's time to get involved in climate justice activism because this is affecting all of us. My name is Braden Elliott. I'm a PhD student at Dartmouth College, and I'm here because I care. And the banner under which the scientists are marching is the debate is over? Correct. The banner says the debate is over because the core part, the part that the planet is warming and the humans are responsible for the lion's share of it, is settled. There's always debate to be had on the edges of a large topic, but the call to action is very clear. And now we're in the block of demonstrators under the banner of we know who is responsible. Anti-corporate campaigners, peace and justice groups, those who are organizing against the groups they say are holding back progress. Sandra Nurse, I'm here with the Flood Wall Street contingent. We're calling on people to do a mass sit-in on the in the financial district to highlight the connections between corporate capitalism, extractive industries, uh, the financing and bankrolling of climate change, the financing of politicians who will not bring meaningful legislation to the table and who are blocking the process of actually bringing meaningful legislation against climate change. Some of the voices from the 400,000 strong People's Climate March here in New York. Special thanks to Aaron Maté and Elizabeth Press in the streets for Democracy Now!